All right, uh, our first lesson for chapter seven is to instill upon you that simple interest amounts are nothing more than just another arithmetic series. So what I mean by an amount, well, first of all, let's just unpack this whole phrase. What is a simple interest amount? Well, simple interest is where, for example, you would invest $100 and let's say that's at 5% interest per year, okay, for every year. And so in your first year, you earn $105. So your 5% of $100 is $5. $5 gets added to 100 and you wind up with $105, okay? So this is your investment, and the, so, okay, this is, this is year one. Year two, we calculate 5% again, but what do we calculate it on? Well, we go back here, we go back to the principal amount. The $100, by the way, is called the principal. It's the initial investment for simple interest. And so 5% of $100 becomes another $5 which we add to your last balance, $105. And so in year two, we get $110. In year three, you kind of get the idea. 5% calculated on 100, added to the 110, that's $5 plus 110, that's $115. And for year four, um, year four, let, let me get a, Year four is $120. Okay. Um, well, this comes from the idea that, as you can see here, uh, with simple interest, every new amount is always $500, or sorry, not $500, but $5 more than the previous amount. Okay, we started with 100, then we went to 105, then 110, 115, 120. So that means that we've been earning over the period of four years uh, $20. My investment has gained $20. I still have the 100 in the bank and the $20 got added to my $100. So, okay, if you recall that the nth term in an arithmetic series was, you know, the, the initial number, which we called A, plus well, uh, let's see. Um, the common difference multiplied by, since that's n, we have to say n minus 1. You remember that from chapter 6. Well, in chapter 7, this is the amount at time t. So we're expressing this as a function of time now. Okay? So that's a of t. This equals, well, our initial investment. The first term in this series, if we go 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, the principal amount is our first term. So that's our principal, I'll call it P. And then also, well, the interest. The interest is every time it's always $5. So I, I well, to be technical, the interest rate is called R, and that's where we get our 5% from, but R is actually expressed as a decimal, so it's really 0 0.05. And then we multiply 100 by 0 0.05, that's where you get your $5 from. You add it back to the 100, and you get 105. So for this, you got principal times your interest rate times time. Well, it's, it's not the interest rate exactly, it's the dollar amount of the interest rate that we're interested in adding here, because this is a dollar amount, right? We can't just put R here times T. I wish I could, but it, it actually doesn't work that way. R is a percentage. How do we turn the percentage into a dollar amount? Well, we know that the percentage R is multiplied by the principal, right? So this is like where you get 100, times 0.05, and this is where you get your $5 from, which you keep adding 
to each of these amounts, or to, which you keep adding to 100 to make these growing amounts. So the total amount of interest over time is not just PR, but PRT, right? Because we got to multiply by time, which would be the number of years. So this is our, we call this another function of time then, the, the dollar interest rate amount, right? The interest rate amount in dollars, right? Interest amount, which is another function of time. It's PRT. And does that work? Well, P times R we already know is five times time. So after four years, five times four will be 20. And indeed, we have 120 here, or $20 added to 100. So that means that we have to have I of T here. But actually, maybe even better, yeah, P plus I of T. Well, we can replace that with, um, A of t equals p plus p r t. We can go like that. Now, the only thing is that kind of makes that makes p common. So we can also simplify this by um, by saying p outside of one plus r t. So p times one plus r t can give us our um, A of T. Okay? And of course, I of T, which is discussed in the book quite extensively, is P times R times T. The principal multiplied by the percent interest rate times T. So, um, R is percent interest rate expressed as a decimal, meaning that if you have a 1% interest rate, then it's 0.01. A 10% interest rate is 0.1. A 5% interest rate is 0.05, that sort of thing. Um, and then I of T is defined as the, the dollar interest rate. over T years. Okay? It's the dollar interest rate over T years. I guess I should give it to you like this. Okay? So that's basically um, an idea of simple interest rate. And you can see here, I hope you appreciate this, that it is an arithmetic series. You will notice that um, this this function, well, all of these functions, all of these functions tend to be linear functions. Okay, that's important because that's a little different from our next topic. The topic after this will be compound interest. So, um, for compound interest, they will not be linear functions, but these are all linear. Um, as you can see, t does not have an exponent on it which tells you that it's linear. Okay, so that's my lesson for 7.1 Simple Interest Amounts Are an Arithmetic Series.